Hi everyone, my name is Taya and today I'm going to be doing a TED Talk on my Genius Hour. So the Genius Hour is a new concept that not a lot of people have heard before. The Genius Hour basically means that it's a research-based project that allows someone to discover their own interests. They often go out and do the research, they get some experience, or they create a product and they share it with others. So for me, my Genius Hour question was, how do I crochet a blanket using different colors and patterns? When I was developing my Genius Hour, I decided to reach three different goals. My first goal was to develop a skill. This would be a useful skill that I could use throughout my life, especially one that worked with my hands and eye coordination. The second one was learning to implement. I had to learn to implement different colors and patterns into the blanket, as well as making sure that the transitions were smooth and went well along with each other. The third one was creating a product. I wanted to create a product that I was proud of, one that I could make with my own hands and share with others. Starting from there, I went and I had to go shop at Michael's for my yarn. That's where it all started. And when I walked into Michael's, I was so overwhelmed. There were over a hundred different kinds of yarn, whether it was different colors or the texture, it was all very, very different. And so I did what anybody would do. I called grandma and grandma helped a lot. So what I decided to use for my blanket was acrylic and I chose two different colors, white and red. So the next was trying to figure out what pattern I was gonna use. And when I was looking, I decided to find a resource that would be useful to me. And so I found this book, Teaching Yourself Visually Crochet. And I found this a really great tool because it has a lot of pictures in here and since I'm a visual learner, that would help me learn to crochet. So I wanted to start off with showing you some of the stitches and stuff that I had to learn. So the first one is a slip knot. So most crochet patterns start with a slip knot, which is a simple knot to start the pattern. And then the next one would be a chain stitch. So the chain stitch often becomes your first row, your first row that you will develop when you're beginning any kind of crochet um, product. But because I was using a blanket, what I decided was I wasn't going to go row on row. I was going to start from the inside of the blanket and work my way out. So that means I had to start and make a circle. So I used this page here to really help me figure out how to make the foundation chain into a circle and then build on that. So that's how it all started and from there because I decided that one of my goals was to use different patterns I had to figure out which patterns I was going to use. So the first pattern I used was single crochet. So a single crochet is just a single crochet knit that you use when you're making or crocheting the blanket or any other material and then I had to use a different pattern and that pattern was actually a lot easier and that one was the half double crochet. Now what I realized was that the single crochet would be very simple but it took a lot of time because you had to make one after the other whereas the half double crochet didn't take as much time because it allows for holes so you would skip every other stitch. So that way it didn't take up as much space and the time went by a lot faster. So you would make more of your product in less time rather than if you were using a single stitch. So what I discovered along the way was I had to figure out which hook I was going to use for my yarn. Depending on the yarn you have different sizes and depending which yarn depends on the hook as well. So here are a few different hooks that are various sizes. And for me, with the yarn that I use, I use a 5.5 hook. And here is my blanket so far. So as you can see, I do have implemented the different colors and there are different patterns as well. So the pattern in the front here, as you can see, is the single stitch. And then here we get into the half double crochet. Now. For the resources that I used that were suitable for me, such as the book and the proper hook and the yarn, 
I discovered that I made quite a few mistakes despite the resources I had. So I made my first mistake here in the center. So as I was making my circle, you can see that it's kind of twisted. It turns a bit. And so that was my first mistake. And what was really interesting was how to figure out how to fix that. Now, I could have just unraveled all the yarn and start over again, but I didn't want to do that. So I simply either added or decreased the number of stitches that I had. So you always have to make sure that you're adding, decreasing, making sure that each side often is equal. That was a real tricky concept, especially when you reach the corners. Because you want to add the same number of rows on each side, the corners you often do double, sometimes triple, sometimes even four stitches. So that often gets confused and that was where I had a real tough time trying to figure out what to do. But it ended up working out anyways. So now I started implementing the colors and you can see that from here I implemented different colors because you can see that I have some of the strings coming out. So soon I will take a needle and put these strings through the blanket so that they won't fall out or cause the blanket to unravel when I'm done. And now you might think, why did I get crochet? Why did I choose to crochet? That seems like a pretty interesting hobby to choose when you're my age. But my inspiration came from my grandmother. My grandmother knits, crochets, sews all the time. That's all she does. She's very hands-on. Um, and what she often does is she knits pneumonia vests for children in Africa because often they get cold at night and they catch pneumonia and they get sick. So a lot of people knit pneumonia vests and send them to Africa and they look a lot like this. They have the little hole at the top of the head and two holes in the sides for their arms. And this is one example. My grandma uses a variety of colors to make them all very interesting. More colorful ones for the younger kids and more solid colors for the older kids depending. Um, so that was one thing that I really admired her for with making so many of these. She's made hundreds of these things and has sent them to Africa. So that was something that I really looked up to. And she always takes on new challenges as well. And she decided to knit herself a sweater as well. And here it is. And as you can see, she has a simple pattern going down the middle. But as you can see, she has the back a front and two arms so she had to knit four different and then piece them all together so that was really interesting that was something I wanted to learn as well so after I'm done my blanket hopefully I'll make a sweater next time so my grandmother was my inspiration but my motivation behind this whole thing was what could I do I wanted to make sure that I developed something that I could create something with my own hands that I would be able to share with others and my ability to create materials that would keep others warm was a huge thing. That was my motivation for that. And so I wanted to make sure that I would be able to be able to crochet or knit or sew things that I could give to my children, my future children or my future grandchildren, just as my grandma has done for me and has already done for my kids whenever I have them. And so that was really something that was my huge motivation was kind of creating something that I would be able to share and especially something that I created with my own hands makes it even more special. Now when I was working on my blanket I realized a few things. There's a kind of comparing and contrasting it to how does crocheting go towards teaching and there's actually quite a lot in common. So crocheting I had to blend different colors and patterns and you do the same with teaching. You have to blend different types of instructions and resources. You have to make sure that you choose the resources that are right for your children, as well as the instructions that would best suit them as a learner. And so that was really where I was interested in, in comparing those two. And so what I kind of, an idea that I thought of was knitting, crocheting, and sewing are all kind of different. So in relation to teaching, you could say that Knitting is like using paper and pens and textbook, the old-fashioned kind of way of teaching. Whereas crocheting could be technological. You're using 
different resources and search engines. And sewing could be getting real life experience. So each of these different sewing, knitting, crocheting, all um, they all suited for different people. My grandma prefers to knit, I prefer to crochet because it's easier. Um, and for teaching it's the same thing. Some students will prefer to use technology, some students would prefer to use a book, some students would prefer to use hands-on experience. So you really have to choose and select what works best for you and hopefully as a teacher you can realize what kind of learners your students are and be able to accommodate to them. And so that was my important thing about my genius hour was learning how to implement different things and to best suit your skills and your way of teaching. And the important thing was to ask questions. I asked my grandma a lot of questions and I used the resources that were available to me, like this book, which was really helpful. And another important thing about my crochet and my blanket was my ability to make mistakes. I made quite a lot. Um, but the way to make your mistakes is to just learn from them and to make them better, which I did. I would, you know, leave my mistakes in the blanket, but I would fix them later on and that would, I mean, they're still there, but at least it shows my progress. And that was something that was really important, was showing my progress. And you can definitely see that in my blanket. It started off a little wrong, like a few bumps in the road, but it got better. And so that was important to me. And I'm really happy with my blanket and I can't wait to finish it. And this is pretty much the end of my TED Talk. And I was very surprised at how much crocheting had to do with teaching, but it does. And so I hope you guys learned um, bit about my crocheting and my genius hour and if you want to learn any more information just take a look on my blog and you can learn all bunch of whole stuff about my genius hour. Thanks, have a great day.